this country, whatever it I takes. I will lead the world in fighting a smarter, tougher, more strategic war on terror. We stand for marriage and family, which are the foundations of our society. We need a president who can stand up and fight for the middle class and for people struggling to get into I it. I will never turn over America's national security decisions to leaders of other countries. Well, we're about to make some calls right now, and I think we were right about Virginia, talking about the closeness of the vote there, and of course the closeness for Jim Bunning, our, my old pitching hero, uh, is obviously find himself in a, in a race that's not quite clear what the result's going to be, and uh, we're not quite ready to make these calls, but of course we do know already Virginia's closer than expected, and we do know that Bunning's race is closer than we expected, too early to call that one, and so we're about to make a call right now in Georgia. George Bush, the President of the United States, is the projected winner in Georgia. No surprise there, but a win. The first win in the column tonight. In Indiana, President Bush, the projected winner with a strong early vote there of 58% to 42%. We've got George Bush now in Georgia and Indiana. In Kentucky, President Bush, the winner in the third state tonight to be called by NBC, the projected winner in the state of Kentucky. So we've got South Carolina and Georgia and Indiana. And now Vermont, John Kerry, the senator from Massachusetts, winning in neighboring Vermont, his first win, first projected win, I should say, of the night. We're projecting, by the way, to make this formal. When all the votes are counted, we'll know uh, which state. We'll be telling you which state has uh, decided. In Virginia, of course, we have a state here that's too close to call, and that means something. It means that the numbers that have come in so far, it's not that it's just too early. It means that the numbers are too close, which makes a statement. We were looking for a close race. We have found one. The old Dominion of Virginia, usually a safe Republican state, having a little bit of time making up its mind tonight. In South Carolina, too early to call. Too early to call right down in South Carolina. That means that uh, we don't have enough numbers, actually, to make that call down there. So we're looking now at the electoral map and we're toning up what we can tell you right now. These are projected wins. Kerry in, in Vermont, 34 electoral votes for the president, three electoral votes for John Kerry. None of this dramatically unexpected except uh, those close races uh, starting with Virginia. Now let's look at the United States Senate races. Uh, Johnny Erickson is the projected winner. No surprise there. His Democratic opponent was very underfunded in the race. That's Johnny Isaacson winning a projected winner in Georgia. In Indiana, Evan Bayh. Right now, we haven't made a call. We are making a call. Evan Bay is the projected He's the Democrat, of course, uh, winning re-election. A very popular guy there, a moderate Democrat in the state of Indiana. And now Pat Leahy, a man who's had a very uh, sharp uh, attitude towards the incumbent president, and of course we know the vice president, we know about that little duel at the uh, vice president's desk in the Senate where bad words were used. Well, Pat Leahy has been, according to our projections, re-elected today in the little state of Vermont, where also the president did very well today. And, and, a state, and, and as I said before, too close to call. This is very interesting. Jim Bunning who I said was a star pitcher, a Hall of Famer in both uh, major baseball leagues, uh, won a very close race last time. Here he is with 19% of the vote in, uh, finding himself in a race too close to call. That's a very big issue right now, very significant. In South Carolina, boy, this is powerful, too close to call. Inez Tenenbaum is apparently doing well enough to keep this race a bit up in the air early in the evening tonight against Jim DeMint, the U.S. Congressman. That's what, that was the last of our announcements to make, our declarations. Let's get so right now to Keith Oberman for other calls. Keith. Let's look at that uh, change in the balance of power. As you saw, the races that we've called in the Senate so far, only one involves the change from one party to the other. Uh, Georgia doing that, and there's good news and bad news in that for the Republicans who gained the seat with uh, Representative Isaacson's election uh, to make it right now, pending the rest of tonight's results, 37-31. One, if you want to look at it from a point of view of where was the Senate when we started tonight, it is now 52-47-1, but again, there are many, many still outstanding uh, with 34 seats up for grabs tonight. But in in Georgia, uh, whereas uh, the rep Republican Representative Isaacson has beaten the, or will beat the Democrat uh, Representative Majette, according to our NBC News projections, that's Zell Miller's seat. So that was a Democratic seat that acted like a Republican seat in the last couple of years anyway. So a one swing 
balance of power change in the Senate thus far, but nothing so dramatic as a uh, bona fide Democratic leader going out, as we might see in South Dakota. We're going to take a further look on that later on. Here are some early projections uh, on the governor's races, and it's too close to call and too early to call in Indiana with just 4% of the vote in between, as Joe Scarborough mentioned earlier, the, uh, the incumbent Joe Kernan and the former OMB director Mitch Daniels. Also too early to call in Vermont, although we do have one caveat on that between the uh, mayor of Burlington, the Democrat Clavel, and the incumbent uh, Republican governor Jim Douglas. There is a 50% rule there. That is why that one is being adjudicated as too early to call. One of those 11 definition of marriage propositions is already uh, pretty much in. Uh, this is uh, verdict, though, is uh, yes, it is now projected that there will be a uh, definition of marriage. Amendment 1 rule in Kentucky defining marriage, not surprisingly, as only between a man and a woman, but was also in Kentucky would ban civil unions uh, in Kentucky. That already projected as the first of the 11 to be decided and in favor of the amendment that would, uh, in essence, ban gay marriage or civil unions in the state of Kentucky. And whether or not Senator Bunning knows anything about that, we'll, uh, we'll find that one out later on. Chris America shows uncertainty or weakness. In this decade, the world will drift toward tragedy. Osama bin Laden didn't attack us. Osama bin Laden attacked us. Al Qaeda attacked First us. First of all, what my opponent wants you to forget is that he voted to authorize the use of force and now says it's the wrong war at the wrong time at the wrong place. Iraq was not even close to the center of the war on terror before the president invaded. It's 7.30 in the east. Uh, let's go right now to the, to the states in which the polls have just closed. Ohio, North Carolina, and West Virginia. We're going to be getting the results in just a minute. Ohio it is now, unfortunately, too close to call, and that is a big moment uh, in this election process. Ron Reagan. Really big, yeah. I mean, uh, Pat's absolutely right. I, th I think Bush uh, critically needs Ohio, uh, but of course, so does Kerry. They both need Ohio. And uh, one thing to remember, too, when these, these poll numbers start to come in, most states are not simply red or blue. They're both. And it depends on what counties, what precincts are reporting first, uh, which numbers are coming in first. So we have to be a little careful when you see 1% of the vote in. Let's go with the other calls right now. That was Ohio, too close to call in the presidential race. In North Carolina, too close to call in the presidential race. Now that is interesting bit of information. The North Carolina vote had been expected to be a strong and early win for the president. Uh, it's not that case at all. North Carolina is too close to call, the, the Tar Heel State. West Virginia, well this one is too early to call. That's a function of how many votes we have now, votes we have to count right now. Uh, no reason to conclude it's going to be close at the end of the evening, but not enough votes to count, 0% of the vote in there in West Virginia. In Virginia, will it go back to that state? Too close to call. Uh, that is significant with 1% of the voting, but we have other indications that suggest that's going to be a close vote. Uh, the, the old Dominion, surprisingly, this election has a lot of close calls right now. Virginia, too close to call, according to NBC. South Carolina, too early to call. There again, we don't have the numbers to tell you anything, really, as to who's leading or who's falling behind. Too early to call in South Carolina. And we're looking right now at the Electoral College. No changes. You can see the red there for the president and uh, a little Vermont up there at the top. Georgia, of course, was solid for the president. And we have Indiana solid for the president. And uh, we have West Virginia. Anyway, we're going to come back and talk about that. But the big, but, but the best, let's take a look right now at the, the uh, close races in the United States Senate right now. In Ohio, George Voinovich, the former governor, uh, the veteran politician in that state, according to our projections, will be re-elected when all the votes are counted in Ohio. So that's one clear result already coming out of the Buckeye State. In North Carolina, still, still uh, too close to call. That's a race that was uh, closed. The, gate, the voting stopped there just at 7.30 Eastern time uh, in the Tar Heel State. Uh, Erskine Balls was, of course, chief of staff to President Bill Clinton. Uh, in a very important race, there are two very impressive candidates, Richard Burr and Erskine Balls. Either man is going to be an important senator should he pull this out. Still too close to call in Kentucky, and that is very significant. With 40% of the vote in an early count, and, and a lot of count already, 40%. And Jim Bunning, who uh, a week or two ago, I think we can all agree, was expected to win by 10 points at least, uh, finding himself in a real horse race with uh, Dr. Mangiardo. Very close. It depends, of course, in that state, like it does with others, uh, where the vote's coming in from. 
That could be a city vote, not a rural vote. South Carolina, another one. There's another heroic contest going on. Inez Tenenbaum, the Democrat, who has accepted many of the president's positions on issues such as the war, etc., in many ways doing what often Southern Democrats do, and that's accepting uh, the leadership of uh, the president, if it's a Republican president, on conservative issues. Let's go right now to Chris Jansing, who's in Cleveland, Ohio. One Let's go right now to Joe Ober uh, it's Keith Oberman, who has some information about some big developments on the governor's races. Let's go down to Keith. Chris, yeah, there are 11 open tonight, and several of them are key, and we're ready to uh, give you likely results on two of them. Let's go to the boards in West Virginia, where the Secretary of State, Joe Manchin, uh, has been uh, projected as the winner by NBC News over the former Army colonel and businessman, Monty Warner. Uh, the Democrats, who, who had uh, outgoing Governor Bob Wise holding that seat, now expected to retain it under Joe Manchin in West Virginia. To North Carolina, where incumbent Governor Mike Easley will get another turn uh, as the projection go, although obviously there's very little vote to actually base this on, at least statistically. Uh, he will beat Patrick Ballantyne, the former state senator, uh, as uh, easily gets a second term in North Carolina. In Indiana, Mitch Daniels, the former OMB director, trying to unseat Joe Kernan, who took over for the late Frank O'Bannon when he passed away last year. This is too early to call, and also just 13% of the vote in, and obviously fairly tight still with Daniels statistically ahead. Too early to call in Indiana. Vermont, again, too early to call because we have a 50% rule. Uh, and uh, Peter Clavel, the mayor of Burlington, the Democrat, trying to unseat the incumbent Republican Governor Jim Douglas. These polls closed at 7 o'clock in Vermont, but we're still calling this one too early to call. So four of the 11 uh, updatable at this point. Chris, back to you at Democracy Plaza. Okay. We're back at Democracy Plaza, and we have a call to make in the state of West Virginia in the presidential race. Let's take a look at this one. It's a hard call. President Bush has won West Virginia, so he's winning states up uh, that he won last time. Uh, no pickup here. Andrea, a conservative state on cultural issues, on gun issues, on coal. The president campaigned there with, uh, with, uh, with uh, he's now got 39 electoral votes to president. And he went in there with Zell Miller, the very conservative senator who I've had some business with, I must say. <laughs> I didn't really want it. Uh, from uh, from Georgia. That's a state that's getting... America shows uncertainty or weakness. In this decade, the world will drift toward tragedy. Osama bin Laden didn't attack us. Osama bin Laden attacked us. Al-Qaeda attacked First us. First of all, what my opponent wants you to forget is that he voted to authorize the use of force and now says it's the wrong work, the wrong time, the wrong place. Iraq was not even close to the center of the war on terror before the president invaded. As promised, it's 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Let's take a look at some of these results. We've got some calls to make. Also, once again, a state that's too close to call. Florida, no surprise. Ohio was too close to call. Florida's now too close to call. That's the big news of this hour. And we're finding a certain pattern here tonight. It's called a close election. Too close to call. Florida, with 16% of the vote counted. A difference of only 133,000 votes between the president and John Kerry. Too close to call the state of Florida. In Illinois, John Kerry has carried Illinois. His, his first big win of the night, not unexpected. That follows, of course, his victory in Vermont. Illinois, a big state in the big heart of the country. John Kerry, the projected winner in New Jersey. A lot of talk right now. John Kerry, the projected winner in New Jersey. Boy, they were talking about that one for a while. The Republicans hoping to poach that from last time's list. New Jersey, projected to go for John Kerry. Tennessee. President Bush, projected winner in the volunteer state. George Bush, the President of the United States, is projected to carry Tennessee. Massachusetts, no surprise here. John Kerry has carried the Bay State, his home state, where he's represented it for all these years in the United States Senate. In Maryland, another Democratic state going for, as projected here, and all the votes are counted. NBC expects that John Kerry will carry Maryland tonight. Connecticut, again. John Kerry, the projected winner in the state of Connecticut. No surprise whatever. That is a state that has been in the expected uh, blue state com all campaign law. In Alabama, again, no surprise. President Bush has carried, according to our projections, the state of Alabama today. Projected winner, the President of the United States in Alabama. In Oklahoma, 
President Bush projected to win that state after all the votes are counted in Oklahoma, the Sooner State. Again, no surprise. This is the red and the blue of American life we're watching here tonight. In Maine, again, another blue state for John Kerry, the Democratic challenger. When all the votes are counted, we project he will win the state of Maine. In Delaware, another bellwether state. This is a bellwether state, but usually Democratic. Uh, last time it went for uh, Al Gore, this time it's going, according to our projections, for John Kerry. Delaware, making a lot of calls early tonight here. Let's take a look at the District of Columbia. Absolutely no surprise, heavily Democratic. Uh, the District of Columbia has voted, according to our projections, for John Kerry. Too close to call again. The big story right now of the hour, Florida, which uh, decided uh, last time's election and put President Bush into the White House thanks to a Supreme Court ruling. Still too close to call, and that means something. That means the votes coming in are so close together that NBC cannot project a winner. Another state too close to call, and this is significant, Missouri, or in its more rural areas called Missouri. Too close to call, that is significant. That's a culturally conservative state where John Kerry has a shot in Pennsylvania. This is a surprise, too early to call, but it doesn't mean much because we don't have the numbers yet. I should say it's not a surprise until we've got more numbers. This simply means we don't have enough votes to count yet, not that the two candidates are too close. Too early means too early in Pennsylvania. In New Hampshire, another state too early to call. That means, again, a small state, but we haven't got enough of a sample to make a judgment as to uh, who's going to win this thing. We may, it may well be a lopsided victory or defeat for either candidate. We simply know it's too early. Another state too early to call. Don't make any assumptions on this. Mississippi, a long time and predictably, I should say, reliably Republican state. Ohio, once again, I say it again, too close to call. That means that the numbers coming in that we're looking at in our samples and our sample precincts are simply too close together to decide who's going to reject, in fact, who's going to win this thing. Too close to call in North Carolina. A big surprise there, I think. Uh, most people would have said that the Tar Heel State would have been safely Republican, as they expected. I think that Virginia would be safely Republican. Too close to call in North Carolina. Too close. Virginia, too close. Interesting along the eastern seaboard how we have these closer races. So one possibility tonight, after all the votes are counted, is that Kerry does much better in the east, north, and south than expected. Let's go to South Carolina. Too early to call. We don't have enough votes there to count. You have to understand everyone's being very cautious this year to make sure that when a call is made, it holds. We're looking at the map right now. Three for Kerry. Actually, it's going up to 77 for Kerry. Thanks to that big one in Illinois, etc., and across the eastern seaboard. You'll notice that Kerry's doing very well along the Atlantic coast there. With the exception, I should say, of, uh, of Illinois, most of his votes so far are coming from the eastern seaboard. The president's polling 66. Now let's talk about those all-important races in the U.S. Senate. In Illinois, Barack Obama is the uh, projected winner. There's a popular fellow here. What an interesting background. Raised in Hawaii, one mother is mo one mother. His mother's from Kansas. His father's from Kenya. What an interesting background he has. Barbara Mikulski, a real veteran of Democratic politics. He comes from Baltimore, as it's pronounced there, Balmer. Barbara Mikulski, the projected winner in Maryland. Let's look at this one, Kit Bond, Christopher Bond, a Republican, been around for a while, former governor of Missouri. He is the projected winner according to our tabulations in the United States Senate race in Missouri. Let's go right now, Richard Shelby in Alabama, another expected winner, a projected winner now thanks to our calculations. Richard Shelby, a projected winner in Alabama. Connecticut, another no surprise, Christopher Dodd, a man who came within a vote of becoming the Democratic leader in the United States Senate. Christopher Dodd, who often appears on the Dynamis radio show. Christopher Dodd, uh, a projected winner in the state of Con Connecticut. Judd Gregg, what an interesting fellow. Look at that young fellow. He served as the sparring partner for President Bush in preparing for his debates with John Kerry. He's been reelected up here, up there in, uh, in New Hampshire, according to our projections, and looks rather handily uh, winning that reelection there. And here's an interesting one. Too close to call. This is big news out of Pennsylvania. Too close. 
Apparently, Joe Hoff was uh, fighting a, a, a more considerable challenge to Arlen Specter, the longtime veteran in Pennsylvania, than expected. That race is too close to call in my home state of Pennsylvania. Another race too close to call. This is Mel Martinez, the HUD secretary. The president got to run for the United States Senate to help bolster his strength in the U.S. Senate. He's having a close race with Betty Castor, the Democratic candidate, with just 17 percent of the vote reporting. Another close race, either too early to call, I should say, in Oklahoma between Brad Carson, the Democrat, and Tom Coburn. We're in the Republican, a doctor, the medical doctor. Too early to call. That doesn't mean much, except we don't have the numbers. That may well be a landslide in either direction. Although, who knows? In Oklahoma, a lot of interesting close to call races developing tonight. And this one, this may be one of the great close to calls tonight in the Tar Heel State. Richard Burr, Republican. Erskine Bowles, former chief of staff to uh, Bill Clinton. What an interesting race between two very estimable, impressive candidates. I think the Senate will win in either case with those fellows. We've got a too close to call race in Kentucky again. Jim Bunning. Hall of Fame pitcher, very popular in the country, very well known, I should say, in the country, finding himself, look at this, 61% of the vote counted, and they're still running too close to call uh, an unknown Mangiato, Mangiardo, the man that, that was referred to by some in a very unpleasant way on the Republican side, very nasty campaign there. Too close to call U.S. Senate in South Carolina, who would have expected this? And as Tenenbaum, we've seen her debate on Meet the Press, uh, a Democratic woman in the South, a tough race, any way you look at it, fighting what looks to be a very close race against the favorite, Jim DeMint. And now let's go right now to a man who may, by many people, have lived. Let's go right now to, let's, let's go right now to Keith, uh, Keith Oberman right now, who's got to look at what else is happening in the elections right now, because there's a lot, of, a lot of else happening besides the presidency and the Senate race. Let's go, Keith. Uh, uh, particularly, Chris, the swing in the Senate is now a push, uh, as you, uh, perhaps, if you've been with us throughout the night, you know that the, the first call of a change in a Senate seat uh, occurred uh, in Georgia, where it becomes now a Republican seat after having been Zell Miller's seat, nominally anyway, a Democratic seat. And now that uh, push, that one-point advantage, if you will, has been uh, obviated by the results from Illinois that uh, we projected just a few moments ago that Barack Obama would indeed defeat Alan Keyes, the uh, can candidate, former presidential candidate twice, former uh, 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 replacement for the original Republican nominee, Jack Ryan, who left under unfortunate circumstances. But earlier, uh, as we projected, the uh, Georgia seat would change hands from the Democrats to the Republicans and Congressman Johnny Isaacson defeating Denise Majette. So right now, the advantage that was originally gained in Georgia has been obviated by uh, a, 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 an advantage uh, for the Democrats in Illinois taking over a Republican seat. Let's look at the uh, five of the 11 key governor's races, five of key of the 11 governor's races, where it's too close to call in Missouri in the race between the Democrat McCaskill, the state auditor, and the Republican, the Secretary of State, uh, Mr. Blunt. In Delaware, where Governor Ruth Ann Minner is uh, the incumbent, uh, is now being challenged by Bill Lee, the Republican, also uh, the repeat of their 2000 com competition, and that one is too early to call. Yeah, in New Hampshire, still too early to call there between John Lynch, the businessman who is challenging the incumbent governor, Republican Craig Benson. Too early to call in New Hampshire. Too early to call in Vermont, where the uh, mayor of Burlington, Peter Clavell, is challenging the Republican incumbent, Jim Douglas. And uh, now still too early to call in Indiana, where the incumbent, Joe Kernan, who replaced the late Franco Bannon last year, uh, is being challenged by the former OMB director, Mitch Daniels. So a run of governor's races, Chris, that are too early to call, meaning we'll have them probably later on. Back to you. We got a big call to make right now for NBC, a projection we're about to make right now. In North Carolina, here it comes. President Bush is the projected winner in the Tar Heel State in the presidential race tonight. That was expected. It took a while. He has won. We still want to know, of course, how that Senate race is going in, uh, in North Carolina between Richard Burr, the Republican, and Erskine Bowles, the former chief of staff to President Clinton. Look at these numbers. Aren't these interesting? There's the president. This is going to be an interesting night as we watch this. So have a cup of coffee because I think this election's going to look like that throughout the night, neck and neck. We haven't seen one like this before. This could be like um, Richard Nixon and John Kennedy back in 1960. Anyway, that's how it looks right now in the electoral map. Andrea. Well, what See how you can lead this country in a time of war if you change your mind because of politics. The president didn't find weapons of mass destruction, so he's really turned his campaign into a weapon of mass deception.
take a look. It's going to be a, an interesting development here because this is one of the states where, of course, former President Bill Clinton campaigned hard and enthusiastically. We're looking right now too early to call in Arkansas, unfortunately, the Razorback State. It's interesting because I'm going to be watching tonight, as everyone's going to be watching, to see uh, one of the many small shows tonight we're all interested in, those of us who fo focus on everything, whether Bill Clinton was able to move this campaign in the direction of uh, John Kerry in its closing week. We're looking now at a very, very close race in the electoral vote, and you're looking up on our building here at 30 Rock to see it dramatized. The president is leading. He may end up leading tonight overall, but they're both a long way from 270 electoral votes, and that is the requirement. This election is not won until a candidate has 270 electoral votes, and from the way we've been counting the votes tonight, with great uh, confidence, but also with tremendous care, it may take a while. Here we have a vote, the call in the United States Senate race in Oklahoma, the Sooner State. Uh, the Republican candidate, Dr. Tom Coburn, is the projected winner for the United States Senate race in Oklahoma. That was a race that a lot of people were watching, and the Democrat ran a tough campaign but didn't win. Too early to call also, or rather too early to call in this case, the Blanche Lincoln re-election campaign in Arkansas. So that's an 8.30 close, and once again, uh, we have ourselves with not enough votes to begin to count and make a call. Let's look right now in uh, the Florida race. This is the Mel Martinez race. As I said, the former HUD secretary pushed very heavily by the president, President Bush, to make that run for a senator from Florida to replace Democrat Bob Graham. Too close to call. These are states that are so interesting. Too close to call in North Carolina for uh, Erskine Bowles. Uh, interesting how close these races on the eastern seaboard are. Who would have thought this? Too close to call in Pennsylvania where you have a veteran, top-notch politician, I mean professional politician like Arlen Specter facing a tough race. Too close to call in Kentucky with 72% of the vote in. Jim Bunning has not locked it up. Too close to call in South Carolina, an extremely conservative state, yet Inez Tenenbaum, the Democratic candidate, holds on in this fight. Too close to call, and that means something. And here we have a new call from NBC to make right now. In the race for president in South Carolina, no surprise here, but it took a while. George Bush, the president, has a, has a projected victory coming his way in the state of South Carolina. So here we're going to take a look at the map right now and see how it looks. It's getting redder at the bottom there. And you notice the pattern. Uh, it's so interesting how it develops here. Red across that southern midsection on the east coast. Blue across the upper northeast up there along the coast. This is the pattern we're probably going to be able to project across the country. It's so interesting. It's how we vote. The south is red. The south is conservative. The north is, is democratic. And it is fighting a, a close race between these two regions. And what I think was going to happen tonight we are going to have an all to make in a big state on the East Coast. And now we are now projecting at NBC that President Bush will carry the old Dominion. It took a couple hours, but he has won uh, by our projections the state of Virginia, uh, home to many correspondents and people on this panel, including Pat Buchanan. Uh, Joe, let's get back to you right now. See the power, it's right now 89 for the pre 102 for the president right now, 77 for John Kerry. We will see how long it takes tonight, right through the morning. Let me go right back to Joe Trippy. Joe, this uh, this. It's 9 o'clock on the East Coast. Of course, a lot of big states have closed their voting. We're going to give you results as they come in. These uh, states, by the way, include, well, here they come, Texas, the president's home, Lone Star State, George Bush, the president of the United States, the projected winner for re-election in the state of Texas. No surprise there. In New York, the Empire State, no surprise there. Senator Kerry, the projected winner here in New York. You can tell from the crowd outside here as a sample precinct that this state is fairly safe for Kerry tonight. Let's go to the next projections here. Kansas, probably the most historically Republican state in the Union. President Bush projected to win the state of Kansas. Nebraska. Another Republican state historically, uh, going back to the Civil War days, uh, President Bush, projected winner in the state of Nebraska. Rhode Island, hugely Democratic state. Uh, John Kerry's the projected winner. Heavily Catholic state, by the way. We'll talk about that religious issue later tonight, tomorrow morning. South Dakota, 
President Bush, the big winner there, uh, the projected winner. That may have an influence, of course, the coattails there on the Senate race involving the incumbent uh, Democratic leader Tom Daschle. Let's go to North Dakota. No surprise there. President Bush, the projected winner in, uh, in North Dakota. These plain states are very, very traditionally Republican. Let's go to Wyoming, another uh, state out in the West. George Bush, the projected winner, the incumbent president, projected as the uh, winner in the state of Wyoming. Let's go right now. Too close to call. Well, this one was talked about a lot in the last couple of weeks. Colorado. It looks like a real fight out there, at least in this early going after the uh, polls have just closed in Colorado. Too close to call. Familiar pattern tonight. Too close to call in New Mexico. Every state, by the way, we've identified as a battleground state for the last couple of weeks is having a tough time deciding today who to pick as the next president. Michigan, too early to call. That simply means we don't have enough votes in. It doesn't mean it's going to be close, but it could. You never know. Michigan has been targeted by the Republicans this time. Minnesota, another state too early to call. That simply means we don't have enough numbers, enough ballots to look at, enough sample precincts to look at to correspond with the exit polls. Too early to call. Also, Wisconsin. A little bit unsatisfactory at this point in the evening. We're not getting what we want, which is some results in these states. Too early to call in Arizona. It simply means we don't have enough votes to count. In Louisiana, too early to call. Again, too early to call. In Florida, too close to call, which means something else entirely. 40% of the vote counted there so far in Florida. It's moving ahead steadily, and it's too close to call. We had a vote difference there on the board of about 400,000. Apparently, it's closer than that in terms of what is being projected. Too close to call in the state of Florida. Ohio. Too close to call. All the biggies, we want to find out what happened. We want it now. Unfortunately, they're too close to decide at this point in the count who's going to win those states. Missouri, it's interesting. Too close to call there, although it may be based on an early sampling, but too close to call in Missouri. That's significant, a relatively culturally conservative state. Too early to call in Pennsylvania. That doesn't mean much. It means uh, too early to call. I don't know what the cheering's about outside. It's too early to call in Pennsylvania. It's too early to call in Arkansas, where President, uh, President uh, Clinton, former President Clinton, campaigned for John Kerry this past week. Too early to call in New Hampshire. Too early to call in Mississippi in the presidential race there. Of course, that's a fairly reliable Republican state. So take a look. Uh, the pre look at how it's filling out here. The President of the United States uh, uh, projected, to win 100, uh, projected to win 156 electoral votes with 27 votes reporting right now in our projections, uh, included in our projections, 112 for Kerry. So the President has taken something of a lead in the 27 states where we've made projections at NBC. It is starting to fill out that continental United States, and we're still up to hear from uh, Hawaii and uh, Alaska. Let's take a look at the U.S. Senate races. No surprise here. Incumbent one-term Senator Chuck Schumer uh, re-elected to the U.S. Senate. He may run for governor, many people think. John McCain, one of the regulars, it's fair to say, on hardball. Many a night we've shared with him. Uh, projected winner, John McCain, according to that check mark there in Arizona. Let's take a look at Wisconsin. Russ Feingold, his partner, that was the McCain-Feingold campaign reform bill. Democrat Russ Feingold uh, uh, checked off here as a projected winner by NBC in the state of Wisconsin. Sam Brownback, no surprise here, a culturally conservative uh, Republican in the culturally conservative state of Kansas, the projected winner. Byron Dorgan, Democrat from North Dakota, projected winner by NBC in North Dakota. Strong incumbent there. Blanche Lincoln, Democrat in Arkansas, uh, projected winner there. Looks rather handily uh, to be reelected there. So that's how it stands right now. Let's take a look at the race. Too close to call. Very interesting. South Dakota. This is the Senate race everyone's going to be watching throughout the night and tomorrow morning into the newspaper writing of tonight. Tom Dasho in a very close race for re-election. Too early to call in Colorado. Pete Coors against Ken Salazar, the state's attorney general, the Democrat, the extremely well-known Mr. Coors in a close race. Too early to call in Louisiana. That's a race where you, you have to win 50% of the vote to avoid a runoff there. Uh, David Vitter is the Republican. Let's go right now. Too close to call in Florida. That persists, that closeness between uh, Mel Martinez, the former HUD secretary, but with 40% of the vote counted. Too close to call. Look at this one. Hold on this one. 85% of the vote counted in Kentucky, the bluegrass state. And Jim Bunny, who everybody knows in that state, for better or worse, maybe for worse at some point tonight, 85% of that vote counted 
and this extremely well-known Republican incumbent is battling for his career. Look at those numbers, 4,000 votes separating those two, uh, those two uh, candidates. Too close to call in North Carolina, much more uh, vote count so far there, just 17 percent with 25,000 votes separating them. That's the precincts, that's 17 percent of the precincts in there. Let's talk about that race is going to be part of this evening's story. Of course, too close to call. This is another fascinating story. Inez Tannenbaum, the Democrat who has uh, bought into a lot of Republican positions on foreign and, and, and domestic issues, battling away there at 37% of the vote. Uh, precincts, I guess, counted there, and she is uh, battling away. Pennsylvania, a real stunner. Too close to call. Joe Hoffel, the underfunded Democratic candidate, uh, battling away the, the, guy, the veteran and professional politician, Arlen Specter. Let's go right now to someone very much involved. In Let's Thank go right now to Keith Oberman with a lot more results coming in from those 9 o'clock closings. Keith. Chris, uh, let's start with the balance of power in the Senate where we've had a straight swap of Georgia for Illinois. The Republican seat in Illinois now goes to the Democrat Barack Obama and the uh, Democratic seat, at least nominally, Zell Miller's old seat goes to the Republican Johnny Isaacson. So essentially, no change in that balance of power in the new Senate. Let's run the governor's table. Some of the results here, uh, a uh, result now, a projection out of North Dakota, projection uh, that uh, John Hoven, the incumbent since 2001, has uh, held off Joseph Satram, the former state senator, in North Dakota's governor's race. Governor Mike Easley of North Carolina has been reelected, according to our NBC News projection. He's been in office since 2001, and uh, he has defeated the former state senator, Patrick Ballantyne, there, so the Democrats hold North Carolina. West Virginia, with uh, Bob Wise, the Democrat, uh, retiring from office. His Secretary of State, Democrat Joe Manchin, will hold the state governor's mansion over the Republican Monty Warner. It is too close to call in Missouri, where the battle is between the state auditor, the Democrat Claire McCaskill, who defeated Governor Bob Holden in the primary, and the Secretary of State Matt Blunt, the Republican. Too close to call with 7% of the vote can counted and an 18,000 vote actual margin difference at this point. Also too early to call in Indiana. Joe Kernan, the incumbent who took over from the late Frank O'Bannon last year, and Mitch Daniels, the former White House Office of Management and Budget Director, too early to call for governor of Indiana. Indiana. Governor of Vermont with uh, the 7 p.m. closure still too early to call a 50 percent rule in effect here. The mayor of Burlington, Peter Clavel, the Democrat challenging the Republican Jim Douglas there. And uh, one more in the Northeast out of our 11 governor's races in New Hampshire. Also too early to call where Governor Craig Benson is being challenged by the Democratic businessman John Lynch. Let's give you two House decisions for the first time tonight uh, in the celebrity congressman race in Kentucky. Nick Clooney, the former Los Angeles and Cincinnati newscaster, and perhaps better known because of his sister, the late Rosemary Clooney, the singer, and his son, George Clooney, the actor. Uh, is uh, projected as having gone down to defeat to the Republican Jeff Davis in uh, District 4 of Kentucky. And one other note from North Carolina, uh, yet too early to call here, where Robin Hayes, the incumbent Republican, is being challenged by Beth Troutman. The name may not uh, sound familiar, but part of her resume would. She was a producer and staffer on a television show called The West Wing. So far, at least, though, the transition from fictional politics to the real thing not going too well for her. Two calls to make on ballot prop positions in the state ballots. Teen pregnancy in Florida, it bears a little explanation. Teen preg pregnancy has not been approved in Florida. This would be Amendment 1, which would ask voters to limit the privacy rights of teens so that a future legislature could pass a law requiring that parents be notified when their minor daughters seek an abortion. One other to make, we said that there are 11 of these ballots, uh, 11 of these amendments or processes on the ballots across the country. And in Oklahoma, the projection is that uh, the definition of marriage between a man and a woman in question 711 will pass in Oklahoma. So that's the table of the other results. Chris Matthews, back to you. I thought we just want to get you. We like to do these as fast as we can. We've got a call in the presidential race. Let's give it right now. In the state of Louisiana, President Bush, the projected winner according to NBC when all the votes are counted in Louisiana. George Bush will be the winner in that state. Let's go right back to uh, Mississippi, another projected win for the president. These are not surprising. These are uh, red states if there ever were one, Louisiana, although there was some thought, I think, early on about the possibility of Louisiana. Let's take a look now at the national map, the electoral map, which will decide the next president. Again, it takes 270 to win this thing, as we've all come to learn the hard way. 171 uh, for the president, 112 for uh, 
challenger John Kerry. And by the way, look how it's shaping up just like it always does. Let me get back to Brian Williams, who's taking a look at the exiting of uh, the There it is, the Senate call. We got to make this one. Uh, Inez Tenenbaum, who uh, fought a courageous fight, but up against a big geographical and cultural threat, uh, the reality of Southern uh, South Carolina being a conservative Republican state, and she's not a conservative Republican, Joe. Exactly. And also, you know, and the thing is, I got a lot of friends in South Carolina, but also a bit more difficult running as a conservative woman against. This president has made, I regret to say, a colossal error of judgment. We will fight the terrorists around the world so we do not have to face them here at home. He misled the American people when he said, we go to war as a last resort. We did not go as a last resort. The only thing consistent about my opponent's position is that he's been inconsistent. Right back now. Unfortunately, once again, we've been stymied a bit. We don't have any dramatic news, if that's what you're looking for. And by the way, the best uh, information on this election has been coming for weeks now. We know which states are going to be close, and they are close. The reporting on this election, because of the very good polling for weeks now, shows where the difficulty is going to be in getting the votes counted tonight because it's so darn close. Let's take a look at Utah. That's no surprise. The president is the projected winner in Utah, a stalwart Republican state. In Iowa, no call. Too close to call. That's a state just like, just like uh, Ohio, just like Pennsylvania, just like Florida. The states we've been watching are so close they cannot be called at this point. You're going to have to be patient tonight to get a result. Nevada, another state on the longer list of, of uh, battleground states. Nevada, where uh, the Democrats have been hoping to pick up that state, to poach that state. They may have to do it by necessity if they want to get the... 270 votes for uh, John Kerry tonight. Montana, too early to call. Don't bet that's a close one. Historically, Montana is a Republican state, a reliably won. No projection there because it's simply too early with the numbers. Again, we reiterate, and how's this for uh, bad news for those who want to go to bed tonight? 77% of the vote in. Still too close to call in Florida. We're waiting to hear. Uh, we don't have the Miami vote in there to count with the other parts of that incredibly interesting state of Florida. We're going to have Joe talk about that in a minute. Too close to call in Ohio, as I said. We're reiterating that with about a quarter of the vote in. Uh, Kerry uh, struggling with the president there in Ohio, Pennsylvania, Florida, Missouri. Too close to call. That's a surprise, I think. Most people would have thought by now that Missouri, which is culturally conservative and really hasn't been on the list of any of the Democratic advertising buys, they haven't been spending money out in Missouri, yet with eight, with almost a fifth of the vote uh, in there, uh, still um, 19% of the, of the precincts, I have to keep reminding you, uh, not the actual vote, uh, too close to call in Missouri. In Colorado, another state on the uh, long list of uh, battleground states, too close to call. Too close to call in New Mexico, another state which is going to be with us on the battleground list throughout the evening. And uh, too early to call in Pennsylvania with 35% of the precincts in. It's still too early to call there. I'm not sure what that is about. It may be about some of these irregularities because I hear that Philadelphia is turning in a superlative performance for the, uh, for the Democratic Party and John Kerry today. Michigan, another state too early to call. We'll have to figure out why that's the case. Uh, uh, that, that, those, closed, those polls have been closed for a while now. Michigan, uh, too early to call. Minnesota, too early to call. I don't know, we don't have enough votes there to decide who is the projected winner. Wisconsin, too early to call. Again, not that they're close. It's that it's too early. Not enough numbers in yet. And Arizona, another state where we're, uh, we've got a polls closed, but we still don't know enough information to begin to, uh, to make a projection. Arkansas, where President Bill Clinton, former President Bill Clinton, campaigned for John Kerry too early to call down there. New Hampshire, with 38% of the precincts in, too early to call. Well, it's a small state, that's a, but an important one. Many people have said here earlier tonight, including Ron Reagan, that, uh, that uh, John Kerry better win that state if he wants to win tonight, for all kinds of reasons. So uh, now we're looking at a map which, despite what seems to be a slowness of reporting the more tricky states to call, is growing in filling out that continental of the United States. Uh, Kerry, 112 electoral votes. 
President Bush 176 votes. And by the way, if you're looking at that, we'll reiterate, no surprises yet. These are the states which have been clear in their results. They've been able to, we've been able to project them rather clearly and rather early. The hard part tonight will be projecting the states that have been embattled now for, uh, for weeks. That's, of course, Nevada, New Mexico, uh, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Florida, all going to be hard to call tonight. You got to bear with us, drink some coffee, have a snack, and stay up late tonight because these are not going to come in early. Now let's go to the United States Senate races, which are turning out to be a bit easier to call. Iowa. Chuck Grassley, a veteran senator out there, uh, the projected winner according to NBC when all the votes are counted. Chuck Grassley will be reelected. Harry Reid, a man of, by the way, watch this fellow. He's the projected winner of Nevada. If uh, Tom Daschle loses in South Dakota, he will be the next Democratic leader. He's number two right now, the deputy leader. Everybody figures he'll be easily elected should Tom Daschle take a tumble tonight. And that's very much open, open to a question at this point. Let's go. Robert Bennett, Utah senator, son of the former senator out there, uh, projected winner in the state of Utah. South Dakota, too close to call. There's no surprise here. Tom Daschle, uh, very strong in terms of bringing the pork home to South Dakota. But let's face it, he's a liberal Democrat in a very conservative state. He's up against John Thune, who's a conservative Republican in a conservative Republican state, and that always makes it easier. John Thune, by the way, lost a close one two years ago to Tim Johnson, handled it like a man, and scored some points out there for his gentlemanly conduct in taking defeat. Too early to call the United States race, United States Senate race in Colorado. There's a very well known to anybody who drinks beer, Pete Coors. He's the chairman of that company, up against the, uh, I should say, the Latino. Uh, Attorney General of that state. He's very well known and he is going to be a very prominent member of the United States Senate simply because he will be one of the few Latinos. Jim Bunning, too close to call, extremely well known with 99% of the vote in in Kentucky. This incumbent senator has not been able to beat a political unknown just two weeks ago, Daniel Mangiardo, who uh, many uh, Republicans were openly mocking just till recently. Let's go to Pennsylvania. What a, what a surprise this is. Joe Hoffel with very little money, taking on the incredibly powerful incumbent, uh, Arlen Specter, who, by the way, this is very important, has enjoyed huge support from organized labor despite his Republican affiliation. He had everything going for him, and yet that race is still too close to call. Another one too close to call, Mel Martinez, the former HUD secretary, battling Betty Castor, with 77% of the precincts reporting. That is a pretty strong report, and yet we can't call that one. North Carolina, Richard Burr, as I said before, two very impressive candidates. Erskine Balls, the former chief of staff to President Clinton, in a very close race. 38% of the precincts are reporting there, and still too close to call. This Senate battle tonight is very interesting. So many races too close to call. Here's one too early to call. This is Louisiana, very interesting state, not exactly the typical southern state. They have a rule down there, by the way, which is so much of uh, Louisiana is unique. They have a rule down there that you have to have 50% uh, in order to avoid a runoff. Let's go right now. We have a presidential call in the presidential contest. Let's take a look at what we've got right now. Arkansas. The president has uh, become the projected winner in the uh, Razorback State. You know, it's so interesting that uh, Bill Clinton went down there and campaigned. Uh, he thought he could carry it for his friend John Kerry. Unsuccessful. Uh, times change quickly in politics. Let's look at these numbers. 182 votes, electoral votes uh, for President Bush. Projected. They're all projected now. Uh, and 112 votes for John Kerry. This is very interesting. The president is clearly taking a lead here in the electoral votes. You cannot deny that. But that said, but that said, nobody has poached on anybody's territory. Nobody's pulled up a, a blue state. Uh, no, uh, no uh, Republicans want a blue. The Republican president hasn't won a blue state, and the, Rep and the Democratic challenger has not won a red state. Look at these opening gray states. We call them the gray states for good reason. They're gray tonight. Let's look at this. This is fascinating. Look at. I think he's the window washing equipment we got going up and down the wall here, pulling these, uh, pulling these tapestries up, these drapes that are moving up. There's, uh, there's the vote as you see it with uh, Kerry behind it, 112, trying to catch up. Interesting to watch that right now. Let's go to something a little, no, just as dramatic, Keith Oberman, who's got all the governorships as well as the Senate tote board right now. Let's go to Keith right now. 
Chris, if you wanted to give it a score, it's two to one in the Senate in favor of the Republicans trying to take seats away from the Democrats. And we've talked previously about how important that is in terms of uh, committee chairmanships and uh, other important aspects to it uh, with the uh, apparent victories, projected victories of uh, Isaacson in Georgia and DeMint in uh, South Carolina and the uh, Democratic projected uh, taking away of the Illinois seat away from the Republicans by Obama, two to one. So an improvement by one, a net improvement by one for the Republicans. All right, let's go through the uh, governorships. We have some calls to make. Uh, Don, John Huntsman, the uh, incumbent, uh, the man who beat the incumbent governor, Olean Walker, uh, has uh, is projected to be the winner in the Republican race for Utah governor over Scott Matheson, son of a former governor himself there. In Montana, an open seat after Judy Martz retired, the Republican Bob Brown and the Democrat Brian Schweitzer. This one is too close to call uh, with a bunch of zeros on the board to this point. In Missouri, as we keep mentioning, too close to call here again, the Secretary of State, Matt Blunt, the Republican, against the Democratic State Auditor who knocked off the incumbent governor, Bob Holden, in her primary, Claire McCaskill, 20% of the vote in, less than 20,000 votes separating the two. Delaware, Governor Ruth Ann Miller, Minner trying to stave off Judge Bill Lee. Uh, she did that in 2000 and is seeking to do it again. But even though 86% of the vote has been counted, it is considered too early to call. Indiana, once again, Joe Kernan and Mitch Daniels, the former OMB director against the man who took over when the uh, uh, revered governor of Indiana, Frank O'Bannon, passed away more than a year ago. This one too early to call at 67 percent. In Vermont, also too early to call with 38 percent in, just 23,000 votes separating the incumbent governor, Republican Jim Douglas, who's been in office since 2002, and the mayor of Burlington, Vermont, Peter Clavel. And continuing in the Northeast in New Hampshire, and this one still too early to call with 41% in and a 3,000 vote difference between incumbent Republican Governor Craig Benson and the Democratic challenger businessman John Lynch. Let's check a few of the congressional seats of import. The Speaker of the House, Dennis Hastert, seeking re-election in District 14. This one a little bit too early to call to this stage, although he has a significant lead over Ruben Zamora in the early counting. And now Tom DeLay, the incumbent House Majority Leader uh, since 1984 in District 22 in Texas. NBC News has projected his re-election and more importantly, perhaps, the impact that uh, he may have on the redistricting in uh, Texas where five incumbent Democrats were rendered vulnerable by the redistricting at uh, Mr. DeLay's insistence in Texas. Before we turn it back to you, Chris, let's run some of the uh, propositions and particularly the same-sex marriage bans in, uh, are on the ballot in 11 states. Seven of them have now, according to our NBC News projections, passed. Arkansas, Amendment 3 has passed with a 73-27 majority so far. In Georgia, it's Amendment 1, uh, asking whether the state constitution should be amended. And it would, in fact, be a man and a woman defining as the only uh, people involved in a marriage. This one supported by the Senator Zell Miller, who is uh, going out, and this is passing. In Mississippi, Again, the perfect record continues with a huge majority with the uh, early stage in here on Amendment 1 that would uh, define marriage as a constitutional amendment, uh, marriage as a union of a man and a woman, heavy victory in Mississippi projected by NBC News. It is also Amendment 1 in Ohio, defining marriages between a man and a woman. Ohio, that's going to pass two by two-thirds, it looks like. North Dakota's marriage definition, Amendment 1, uh, no other domestic union will be given the same legal effect in North Dakota, and this one we're projecting. It is also going to pass. And just in, uh, perhaps the most significant of the ballot measures tonight, that Amendment 36 in Colorado, which would split the Electoral College vote between the winner and the loser in all practicality, giving the winner, the presidential winner, including the presidential winner tonight, five votes in the Electoral College and giving the loser in the state four votes. That one is on its way to defeat, according to our NBC News projection. So no, uh, none of the uh, controversies, Chris, that we would be expecting if Colorado decided to change the Electoral electoral vote rulings uh, there tonight will uh, apparently be dealt with and we'll go back to you. We have to do what we do first here tonight, let's make a call and here it is right now, Missouri, no longer a contest according to NBC, George W. Bush, the President of the United States will carry the state of Missouri. As I said, that was not long on the uh, list of battleground states, the Democrats stopped running advertisement in there several weeks ago, uh, not a state they still hope to win. That said, let's look at the numbers on the tally right now. We've got 193 uh, right now for the president, 112 for Kerry. It's moving up towards two to one again. Look at that map with the gray states on it. Florida, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, 
uh, Minnesota, Iowa, lots of states to be deciding tonight. NBC has made no projections in any of those states. We got it. We got a new one. Let's join in. Let's All put right. in some news now. We got a presidential call to make of this moment. In the state of Arizona, the projected winner, George W. Bush, the President of the United States, has won in Arizona. Big uh, big call there. And we got another one right now to give you, right now, right on the heels of that one. A big one. Pennsylvania, John Kerry is the winner in Pennsylvania. By our projections, that removes, by our projections, when all the votes are counted, a win in Pennsylvania for John Kerry. Very interesting, because that now leaves two of the big three. Uh, the deal maker for the President now is probably having to win two. Maybe having to, what do you think, Joe? He has to win two now, the president to get reelected. Well, president, does he have to win Florida and Ohio or just one? president needs to win Florida, and then he needs to win a combination of those states that I talked about. He needs to win Iowa, New Mexico, Nevada, some of these other states that are still hanging out there. As Pat Buchanan pointed out several hours ago, because of redistricting, I think about a late eight electoral votes went from the Gore column to the Bush column over the past four years. I don't so, think either of these results are very surprising, though, Aaron. No. Oberman. Uh, also looking at the results, let's get some more results from Keith on the governorships and the Senate, how it stacks up right now. Keith. Uh, Chris, 11 governorships up for grabs this evening, and we have now three each for the Democrats and the Republicans. First to uh, Indiana, where Mitch Daniels, the former OMB director, has uh, unseated Joe Kernan, the incumbent Democrat, who taken over for the late Frank O'Bannon uh, upon the latter's passing in 2003. That's the projection by NBC News. Mitch Daniels in a, what looks like a significantly large market margin victory over Indiana uh, in the governor's race. And in Delaware, this one also called as a uh, probable by NBC News. The projection there is that incumbent Ruth Ann Minner, the Democrat, will retain the office that uh, she uh, won by defeating Bill Lee in 2000 and going again against uh, Judge Lee again today and uh, defeating him once more. So three each and five still pending. Chris, back to you. Okay, thank you, Keith. Just a quick thought here. I wanted to make some news. America shows uncertainty or weakness. In this decade, the world will drift toward tragedy. Osama bin Laden didn't attack us. Osama bin Laden attacked us. Al Qaeda attacked us. First of us. all, what my opponent wants you to forget is that he voted to authorize the use of force and now says it's the wrong work, the wrong time, the wrong place. Iraq was not even close to the center of the war on terror before the president invaded. Okay, here they are, the big calls, of course, starting with the biggest state, California. We're going to have that result in just a second. Here it is. California, John Kerry is the projected winner for the largest state in the union. Uh, there it is with all those 50-some electoral votes. A big win, not unexpected, but a big win for John Kerry. That'll move him up in, the, uh, in numbers and show the real competition going on here. Washington State. Also, John Kerry, a uh, projected winner by NBC there. So that's two wins on the West Coast. This is becoming something of a bi-coastal race here. Of course, in Idaho, uh, President Bush and conservative Idaho, uh, clearly uh, uh, the winner there in a reliably Republican state. We're looking right now at too early to call Oregon. It has been on the list, of a broad, a longer list of the uh, Battleground states, Oregon, uh, too close, too early to call. In that case, we just don't have enough numbers to make a call. Too early to call as well in Hawaii, where the vice president went out there this weekend and talked a lot about the dangers of a second Pearl Harbor. It was a rather dramatic statement out there. Too close to call. Again, Florida, that's going to be haunting us throughout the night, perhaps. Uh, too close to call in Florida. Too close to call in Ohio. The two of the other big three we've been watching all night. Ohio, too close to call. Colorado, too close to call. Another state that is hard to figure sometimes in presidential campaigns. It's gone from liberal in the 70s to conservative with the focus on the family and the conservative cultural groups moving in there. And then with the Hispanic vote gaining power, too close to call in Colorado. It keeps changing that state. Iowa, too close to call. Another key battleground state where the president had been doing very well out there. Nevada, too close to call. One of the states that Bill Clinton, the former president, went out and campaigned in in the last week of the campaign. New Mexico, the other Bill Clinton state uh, that he visited, another one that's too close to call. You'll notice these are no longer too early to call. They're getting to be all too close to call. Here's the one, uh, having said that, too early to call in Michigan. Not enough numbers there to even make a projection as to whether it's close or not. It's simply too early to tell in Michigan. In Minnesota, too early to call. That's what it means, too early. We don't know yet. And in Wisconsin, another state too early to call. Uh, not enough numbers there to give us a sense of uh, who to project. Too early to call 
in New Hampshire. Again, no indication of whether it's going to be close or not. It's simply too early to call, and it's late. Too early to call in Montana. Uh, that's usually a Republican state. I wouldn't go by that as indicative of a close contest. Let's look right now at the Electoral College votes. Whoa, there it is close now because of California's big 50 plus electoral votes, 199 electoral votes for challenger John Kerry, 207 for the President of the United States, 207 to 199. Uh, nobody's won a state from the other party. Look at that map, let's hold it up there. See all those reds? They were red last time. See all those blues? They were blue last time. Nothing has changed. Look at the grays. That's where the battleground is. That's where the advertising money has been spent on TV. That's where the candidates have traveled over and over and over again. States like Iowa, as small as they are, seven electoral votes, in and out of there all the time. The only one of the states I'd have to say that's uh, among the battleground states is Pennsylvania, which was blue last time, heavily contested by the president this time, blue again uh, this time. But look at those numbers. You can't make it much closer than that. It's 11 o'clock at night, and it's 199 to 207. Let's go to Keith Oberman for more results right now. Keith. Oh, more. We've got more Senate races right now. Uh, Barbara Boxer has done it again, her third election to the United States Senate. She just keeps doing it. Barbara Boxer. Bill Jones, a major opponent this time. Patty Murray, another woman in the United States Senate from Washington State. She's won, according to our projections, re-election. Ron Wyden in Oregon, re-elected by our projections. Ron Wyden, Barbara Boxer, Patty Murray, all re-elected by our projections so far. Mike Crapa, Crapa, who is a Republican from Idaho, again following the pattern of ideology in the West. Senators from the West express the ideology of their constituents there. Danny Inouye, World War II hero, lost his arm in the war, a very popular fellow. He's been re-elected once again. What a career he's had, Danny Inouye from Hawaii. South Dakota, too close to call. This is going to be too close to call. Those numbers, 43% of the precincts reporting, are high. There are not that many people that live in South Dakota. Those numbers are going to be fought for one at a time, a real retail state where a huge percentage of that state knows Tom Daschle personally and also are getting to know John Thune. So this is like running for Congress rather than running for the United States Senate. It's a very small state with a very small population. Everybody knows everybody. Too early to call in Colorado. And that's a big name. Obviously, everybody knows Pete, Pete Coors by name because of the beer. Let's take a look at Kentucky. You know what? This is interesting. Hold on this one. NBC, I don't know what anybody else is saying, but NBC says this call is too close to make right now. It's too close to say who's won that race, even with 99% of the vote counted. Uh, Jim Bunning has not been declared the winner by NBC. He has been declared the winner by Jim Bunning, which is an interesting thing, as Joe has been having a bit of sport with him earlier tonight. We'll see whether there's anything clinical involved there, but I'm not so sure. Let's take a look at Pennsylvania, too close to call. Arlen Inspector going for his fifth term, Joe Hoffel, an underfunded congressman who many thought was doing this as a run for the next time. He was hoping to maybe run close with uh, Senator Inspector and maybe take on Santorum the next time. Clearly making a run of it this time with two-thirds of the precincts in and reporting. Look how close this is, and this was not a battle of money. Uh, Arlen Specter spent a lot more than Joe Hobble, and he had the support of the unions of Pennsylvania. Unusual for a Republican in a general election. Boy, there's a lot of surprises tonight. This is amazing. Florida, Mel Martinez, the HUD secretary, the president, personally recruited to this campaign with 92% of the precincts in. Look at this race. This country is divided not just as a whole. It's divided in every portion of the country for any race. It is amazing. When you want to fill an open seat, you got a competitor. Look at this one. Too close to call in North Carolina. The Tar Heel State Erskine Bowles, who was chief of staff to President uh, Clinton and who ran two years ago against Elizabeth Dole and got beaten rather handily, almost by 10% last time. And look at him with two-thirds of the precincts reporting. There he is. Look at this. Too close to call. Very interesting races all across the country for the United States Senate. In Louisiana, it takes a 50% of, of victory down there to win without a without a runoff. Too early to call. Uh, we got David Vitter, the Republican, up against Chris John, and he's one of the two uh, one of the two uh, Democrats running in that very interesting way they do things down here. Now to my college, Keith Oberman, for the rest of the results coming up right this moment.
right, Chris, uh, with all that in the Senate and even with perhaps the Bunning and Specter uh, re-election still up for grabs, with all that has actually happened, there's only been two changes or three changes, uh, a net uh, gain of one by the Republicans because uh, DeMint uh, takes the South Carolina Democratic seat away from them and Isaacson in Georgia takes the Democratic seat away from them, whereas uh, Barack Obama uh, wins for the Democrats in Illinois. So it's plus one on the Republicans and minus one on the Democrats. Let's do some of the House for you. Uh, in Florida, Representative Catherine Harris, who was big news four years ago, uh, as we all remember, is now projected as the winner in District 13, even though she had trouble with her own absentee ballot. She's the winner over the Democrat Jan Schneider. Into the Texas redistricting saga, or as it's also known, the Chainsaw Massacre. One of them, Max Sandlin, a uh, uh, redistricted incumbent, is uh, projected as the loser in District 1 to Lewis Gomert, the former appeals court judge in District 19, where we had two incumbents fighting each other. Randy Neukerbauer, the Republican, is going to, uh, according to our NBC News projection, defeat Charlie Stenholm, the Democrat that's in District 19, uh, by uh, a handy margin, if that holds up. And in District 32, Pete Sessions and Martin Frost, one of the uh, most publicized congressional races of the uh, year, uh, is going to again go to, or it has to go to the incumbent, and in this case it is Mr. Sessions in District 32. Once again, the Texans who were redistricted, the Democrats, uh, 0 for 3 so far. In Louisiana, the first Indian American in Congress, Bobby Jindal, uh, is projected as the winner in a huge field of no less than six candidates uh, in Louisiana with 90% of the vote in, in District 1. And in a uh, District 2 Connecticut vote, which we present to you because the Democrats thought they had a shot at this seat, taking it away from incumbent Rob Simmons, and that was part of the keystone of their hopes of getting the balance of power back, or at least closer uh, in the House. They didn't get it. Rob Simmons projected by NBC News as the winner there. Some gubernatorial races. It's uh, too early to call the uh, bid to replace Governor Gary Locke in Washington uh, with the uh, Democrat Gregoire and the Republican Rossi uh, neck and neck very early on in the county. In Missouri, it is still, though half the vote is in, still too early to call with a 23,000 vote difference between uh, State Auditor McCaskill and Secretary of State Blunt. It is too early to call still in Vermont, even though the polls closed four hours and seven minutes ago, where Jim Douglas is uh, seeking to fend off the challenge of the mayor of Burlington, Peter Clavel. And it is still too early to call in New Hampshire, where it is the Republican incumbent, Craig Benson, hoping to stave off uh, the John Lynch challenge, and Lynch with a marginal lead, even though 60% of the vote in, way too early to call, uh, which I guess is the mantra we could all say it together, Chris, in all the races uh, so far, way too early to call. Back to you. We're back at Democracy Plaza counting the votes with everyone else in the country. Let's go right now to Keith Oberman, my colleague in the count. Keith. All right, Chris, the uh, Senate balance uh, has not significantly changed tonight, but we've had the swapping of two Democratic seats uh, for one Republican seat as, uh, as the changes occurred in Illinois, where the outgoing uh, senator has been replaced by Barack Obama, uh, who defeats uh, Alan Pease uh, by uh, a significant margin. The projection is, is in already uh, in Illinois. Barack Obama, uh, thus making Alan Pease and former MSNBC hosts 0 for 1 on the senatorial uh, votes for tonight. Uh, but as we said, uh, that is the only Democratic pickup of a Republican seat thus far. And there are two that have gone the other way. In Georgia, Representative Johnny Isaacson has uh, beaten Denise Majette uh, to get to a was Zell Miller's Democratic, uh, uh, theoretically Democratic stronghold. And uh, the uh, other victory for the Republicans, grabbing a uh, formerly Democratic seat, the one belonging to Fritz Hollings, who uh, is retiring, goes to the Congressman Jim DeMint, who will beat Inez Tenenbaum, according to NBC News project, uh, projections. Let's give you some of the key House of uh, Representatives right now. There was a, a virtual toss-up uh, believed to uh, be existing in District 4 in Connecticut, where the uh, veteran uh, Republican Chris Shays was challenged by a select woman from Westport, Connecticut, Diane Farrell. And our projection there is that uh, Representative Shays has uh, withheld uh, that uh, position uh, against the challenge. Uh, in District 8 in Indiana, this is relevant because John Hostetler uh, has uh, uh, staved off John Jennings, who, among other things, was uh, gotten money, was uh, raised for him by Larry Bird, 
the former Boston Celtics star and Indiana Pacers executive in Vermont uh, in the gubernatorial races that are still in play. We've now called Jim Douglas, the incumbent, in a uh, what looks like a significant victory on the way over the mayor of Burlington, Peter Clavel. 50% rule looks like he's going to clear it. Missouri, though, is still too close to call with 55% of the vote in against the, the woman who knocked off the incumbent, Governor Bob Holden, State Auditor Claire McCaskill, against Secretary of State Matt Blunt. Too close to call. Too close to call in Montana, where Secretary of State Bob Brown and Brian Schweitzer, who ran for the Senate in 2000, are locked up uh, in a too close to call race for the governor's race there. And uh, continuing our run through of the 11 gubernatorial spots open, uh, the incumbent Craig Benson in New Hampshire is uh, leading or trailing slightly John Lynch, but that one is still too early to call. And one more with Gary Locke, the Democrat, leaving in Washington. It is, a uh, again, just a, an extraordinarily close race early on uh, between the Democratic uh, candidate Gregor, the uh, state attorney general, and former state senator Dino Rossi. So that's uh, some of the other races. Chris, back to you in Democracy Plaza. see where we're going in the campaign and the election night right now. Let's go to Keith Overman. And Chris, we'll look first at the House of Representatives. The Democrats had a slim and perhaps a not too realistic chance of trying to get back in control in the uh, continuing race for the balance of power at the uh, beginning of the night with all seats obviously eligible for election 227 to 205 a 22-point Republican margin. So the hope was that the Dems would get, uh, for the Dems' hope anyway, would they get 12 or 13 seats and regain control of the House. This does not look likely now after one, two, three, four, five swings or five toss-ups to uh, the uh, Republicans. And now we have two for the Democrats eating slightly into that total, but nothing uh, extraordinary. Let's give you the two. The one in Georgia, first off, out of District 12, where John Barrow has taken the seats for the uh, for the Democrats uh, away from the incumbent Republican Max Burns. Uh, Barrow, the athens Clark County Commissioner, gaining a victory for the Democrats in Georgia. And in, in Illinois, Melissa Bean, local businesswoman, is projected as the winner against the incumbent Republican Philip Crane, who has represented District 8 in the Illinois uh, in in the, in the House of Representatives since 1969. He first entered Congress to replace Donald Rumsfeld, but now he is going out in a most unexpected outcome in Illinois. Quick look at the House. Chris, back to you. Crane, Phil Crane, his brother. Look, okay, Carl Kennedy, thank you. We'll be back to you again and again tonight. Let's go right now to a call we have to make in the state, the Keystone State of Pennsylvania. There it is, Arlen Specter, a, a professional, if there ever was one with union, big labor support has been declared the uh, the re-elected uh, veteran senator of Pennsylvania, Joe Hoffel, fighting a very heroic campaign. They're staying in the run. 80% uh, of the vote in. He's got 44%. Very impressive fight by Joe Hoffel, but not successful. Arlen Inspector, as always, certainly in the last quarter century, has, has won again. Let me go right now to Lester Holt, who's going to give us a sense, hopefully, of why it's taking so long in Steve. We've got a presidential yeah. call. Well, then we got the tie. In this yeah, program. Let's go right now to a new call in Pennsylvania, Oregon. Gary, <laughs> the projected winner in the state of Oregon, one of the outside uh, battleground states in the long list of battleground states. Oregon, he's won a state that Al Gore won last time, another uh, blue state fill. There it is, filling it in out there. Bouncing out the numbers, it's certainly turned on the crowd behind us. Look at this, Kyle. Look at this. This is uh, one of the one of the uh, historic campaigns for president. This is going to be going down in the history books as a close one so far. You know, I want to start with uh, with Ron. Uh, Ron Silver's been all over the place. You're telling me there's no lawn signs for the president in Beverly Hills. I love it. Anyway, let's go to Montana right now. We've got a call there. The president of the United States is the projected winner in the state of Montana. These states are falling into line, hey, folks. Hey, Chris. I, I, They're I, falling into the traditional pattern of last time around. Look at this map. Balkanized it's a, America. It's a, it's a pod. It's a reproduction. It's a cloning of last time around. I, I wanted to follow up on what Ron Silver said because I had several pollsters say it to me privately and also come on my show and tell me... NBC, this state of Colorado now 
is coming up. We're going to make a call right there. Here he comes. They were calling it for President Bush, the projected winner in the state of Colorado. That was a disputed state. This is, although it's a uh, it's a red state from last time, it was in dispute. It was a hopeful state for uh, for the people supporting uh, uh, John Kerry. Uh, let's go right now to Carter Eskew to give us a sense of he's a big man in the uh, Bush campaign on our show an awful lot, and we appreciate him. Well, we are deeply divided, Chris. I think this okay. is a, a something okay, we'll study you. for a Florida. long time. Here's a big one for your side, for the president's campaign. George W. Bush, the projected winner in the state of Florida. That's two out of the three of the big ones. Ohio still to go. Does that? What does that mean for your campaign, Tucker? It's it's huge, Chris. It's absolutely uh, giant. Four years ago tonight, we all thought we had Florida and learned the hard way. We did, but uh, it was closer than we wanted it to be. This is a bigger win than we expected, as I said, because of numbers that turned out better than we expected in, in a lot of the state. And we held the margins down in the Democratic counties. Broward didn't do what they wanted it to. All to make in the uh, Senate contest in the state of Colorado. Let's take a look. Salazar, very interesting. I don't think he was predicted to be ahead in this race. Ken Salazar, the Democrat, defeating the much better known Pete Coors. Uh, that's an interesting race in the balance of the fight for the balance of power in the Senate. You want to say something, John? Yeah, I, I certainly do. Speaking of faith, I was talking to a friend out in Colorado who was active in politics earlier today. I said, I'm a libertarian sort of Republican. My kids and I watch South Park. You know, it's amazing. As someone that loves politics, I step back for one moment, and I love big turnouts. It's a good thing for the country. Okay, just a minute, just a minute, Mr. Ford. Congressman, we've got to go now to some bad news for the Democrats, some very good news for the president and his supporters. Ohio, according to NBC's projections, will go at the end of the night when all the votes are counted to the president of the United States. 51 votes up there represent right now, but what a big win. That's, uh, uh, I would say, based upon working here, that's a carefully made projection, Congressman. Uh, uh, like the others before it, there's not going to be any reversals tonight. Look at these numbers that filled in there. Uh, again, a state the president carried in his election in 2000. He's carried again according to our projections. Your comment, Congressman. If those numbers are true, uh, then we obviously uh, will face a difficult time, a much more difficult time going forward. Uh, we've not concluded that yet here in this headquarters. Uh, so it's difficult to say. I know the network has projected what you're projecting, uh, but I'm going to wait and see and hear from those on okay. the ground in Ohio I'm and sorry, I'm ensure sorry, that we've got we the right count. With you again. This news keeps coming, and here it is. Another one could be decisive. Alaska. The projected winner in Alaska is President Bush. Uh, we were just hearing from uh, from, uh, from uh, Joe Scarborough about the significance. Uh, Joe, you think that's enough now? Well, no, it is enough. I mean, you're at 246 after Florida Falls. You add 20 from Ohio. You add the three from Alaska, you are at 269. That means the tie goes to the president. And uh, George Bush, if these projections are correct, has just been re-elected president of the okay, United let's States. Let's go back to Congressman Ford. Congressman Ford, on a good night, looking forward, the Democratic challenger could win Wisconsin. Keith Oberman with some more, for some more information and results. Keith. All right, Chris, let's go through the House of Representatives. Obviously, a Republican uh, stronghold these last two years. It will give you all 435 results, not individually, just as a projection. The night began with the Republicans ahead, 227 to 205, with one independent. Our NBC News projection is that they will add eight seats, plus or minus four seats. That's a projection indeed. 232, 202, approximately the expected new House. Uh, four redistricted Democrats already off the board in Texas, as an example, supporting that evidence. So minor gains for the Republicans expected in the House of Representatives. We've been talking all night about the ballot props around the nation. Eleven separate ones defining marriage as being between a man and a woman, variously reported as amendments, constitutional amendments. Amendment 2 in Michigan, NBC News projecting it will pass there. Uh, obviously, you see it by half a million votes. In Montana, it's C-96, requires a state constitution to define marriage between a man and a woman. It's going to pass by about uh, two to one there. And in Utah, it is Amendment 3 uh, defining marriage simply as a union between a man and a woman. And that is projected as coming out in favor uh, of that, in fact, uh, definition therein. There's one other I wanted to report to you, Chris. South Carolina, the amendment has passed and uh, liquor can now be sold in forms other than two ounce bottles, which sounds like a good idea for all of us here on the panel. Back to you. Whoever gets it wins. It is the Florida of 2004. 
We're going to interrupt right now. We have another call. Here it comes. Hawaii. John Kerry. John Kerry is one. One of your states has jumped in there. It's a small state. And by the way, the vice president, as we noted, did take the trip out there this weekend to try to win it. He also used it as an occasion to remind us of a possible second Pearl Harbor, by the way. Not, not, not incidentally. That was a powerful statement by the vice president. So there you see the numbers shaping up. 211 to 269. No 270 by the president. Even to giving him, by the way, even giving him Ohio. He doesn't have the 270 requisite to win yet. And no. so this, uh, this race is on. And Pat, you make a point there. Now, and uh, go to Keith Oberman for some uh, some updates on the governor's races. And of course, taking a look once again at that Senate composition that's taking shape right now. Keith. Yeah, Chris, I actually have results and ones that don't are not likely to be contested in any way. Let's start with the uh, governor's seat, the open seat in Missouri. After Claire McCaskill, the uh, Democrat, the state auditor, had beaten the incumbent Bob Holden in the primary, she herself is then defeated by the Secretary of State for Missouri, Matt Blunt. That is now called a. Uh, by NBC News, a Republican takedown of the uh, governor's chair in Missouri. Uh, there are also three measures to uh, give final scores on in uh, the measure 36 balloting in Oregon, which again is a definition of marriage as between a man and a woman, one of 11 propositions nationwide tonight. This one has passed by a comparatively small total, but now you see it. It's 11 for 11. Arkansas, Georgia, Kentucky, Michigan, Mississippi, Montana, North Carolina, Ohio, Oklahoma, Oregon now, and Utah, all of them 11 for 11 uh, approving those same-sex marriage uh, measures. And then uh, one more to report that has been projected by NBC News. In Oregon, medical marijuana, expanding the existing medical marijuana program has gone down to defeat, according to our projections, with 80% of the actual vote in. So, actual results. Chris, back to you. Thank you. Now to Keith Oberman, who's got the latest numbers. He's going to run through them, and we'll run through what's left. Uh, Keith. Surprisingly enough, Chris, there are some undecided races in both the Senate and the House. Uh, in fact, we only have right now a net gain uh, uh, through all the evening's activity in the Senate of what one seat for the Republicans. They've gained three old Democrat seats, and the Democrats have taken two seats uh, away from the Republicans. Salazar in Colorado, uh, Obama in Illinois on the GOP side of things, Burr in North Carolina, DeMint in South Carolina, and Isaacson in Georgia. So the Republicans with a net gain of one. Still too close to call. South Dakota, the second most contested race tonight, where Tom Daschle is behind by nearly 9,000 votes with 99% of the vote in, and yet this one has not been called. $35 million spent between the two sides on that one. In Florida, this one has still not been called with 99% in, and an 80,000 vote margin favoring at the moment the former HUD Secretary Mel Martinez over the Democrat Betty Castor. Kentucky, even though it is now what, seven hours since Jim Bunning made his acceptance speech for his uh, re-election? A 22,000 vote difference with 99% of the vote in and no call in the bunning Mangiardo vote in Kentucky for the Senate. Louisiana is still a toss-up uh, here with 100% of the vote in and a 400,000 margin vote for David Vitter. It is still too close to call. I will not go into the analysis of that because it eludes me entirely. In Alaska, the incumbent, Lisa Murkowski, appointed to that role when her father moved up from senator to governor in 2002, is just barely staving off Tony Knowles, and that one is too close to call. The governor's races, meanwhile, that are still uh, too close to call in Montana, with Judy Martz retiring. It is Bob Brown, the Secretary of State, trailing the Democrat, the former Senate candidate, Brian Schweitzer. Washington looking to succeed Gary Locke, the outgoing Democratic governor there. The race is indeed too close to call, and I'll use your line, Chris. Look at this, 98% of the vote in, and the margin of difference is 627 votes for the governor of the state of Washington. One more still too close to call in New Hampshire, where Craig Benson, the incumbent, is trailing by 14,000 votes with 4% uh, uncounted yet, the Democratic businessman, John Lynch. To go quickly through some of the key congressional races, in Texas, the chainsaw mass Massacre. The realignment, the redistricting by the Republicans against the Democrats has largely succeeded. Louis Gohmert has defeated, our projection says, Max Sandlin, the incumbent in what is now District 1. In District 2, Nick Lampson, a Democrat, an incumbent, 
ousted by the former state district judge Ted Poe, the Republican, according to our projection, 100% of the vote in there. District 19, two incumbents because of the mergers and redistricting there. Neugebauer, the Republican, beating Charlie Stenholm, the Democrat, according to our projections. Pete Sessions, the Republican, in a similar all-incumbent race in District 32 over Martin Frost, the Republican, and the sole survivor in this group in District 17, Chet Edwards, the Democrat, who's been in the House since 1990, over Arlene Wolgamuth. And this new district, though, 59% Republican, still going, according to our projections, to Edwards. Around the country in the House, Phil Crane, the former Democratic, or Republican, rather, candidate for president years ago, is now out of the House after serving in that 8th District of Illinois since 1969, losing out to Melissa Bean, according to our projections. The Georgia 12th Democratic District, which was key to the uh, Democrats' uh, hopes of uh, possibly uh, gaining some ground in the uh, big margin of difference in the House, uh, has in fact now uh, is not yet called, even though the Democrat John Barrow is leading by about uh, 9,000 votes with nearly all of it counted. Oregon District 1, David Wu, uh, surviving a scandal from earlier in the year that was actually much earlier in his life but reported earlier in the year, uh, is about to be returned, according to our projection, out of the 1st District in Oregon. South Dakota at large, Stephanie Herseth, who uh, uh, replaced Bill Janclau after he resigned in the uh, manslaughter conviction case, as you know. Our projection there has, uh, has Herseth uh, defeating uh, the Republican Diedrich. And uh, in Louisiana, with a uh, five-person field, there will not be a runoff here. Bobby Jindal, who would become the first Indian American, uh, Indian American in Congress, uh, is going to take District 1 in Louisiana. There will be a runoff in District 3 in Louisiana, and it will feature the son of the incumbent, who is uh, retiring, Billy Towson, finishing uh, atop the five, uh, rather six-person field. But Charlie Mellicon, the Democrat, that runoff will be uh, at the beginning of December, December 4th. Hopefully we'll have the president in place by then. Louisiana District 7, there will also be a runoff uh, between uh, the Republican Bostony and the Democrat Mount, as uh, no one succeeded in getting the requisite 50% there. California, no surprise here. Nancy Pelosi, House Minority Leader and an incumbent there since 1987 in a landslide over De Palma, the Republican, with 100% of the vote in. And a little family thing from Missouri in District 3, the son of Gene Carnahan and the late Governor Mel Carnahan, Russ Carnahan, has by our projections gained election to the House from District 3 in Missouri. So we don't have exact numbers yet on the makeup of the new House of Representatives, but the NBC News projection is that when all is said and done, 232 Republicans, 202 Democrats. This is given on a plus or minus four seats scale. So we're figuring somewhere of a margin between 26 and 34. We went into the night with the Republicans ahead by 22. So that, Chris, is everything else. Back to you. <laughs> Thank you all very much. God bless you. God bless this great state and this great country. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, that's connected to the culture. <laughs> well, there's a state that NBC uh, News has not called. It's, uh, but we have. Um, well, let's take a look at this, Minnesota. Here's one we have just called. Uh, NBC projects that when all the votes are counted, there a lot of them have been counted. Uh, John Kerry will carry uh, Minnesota, a usually Democratic state, which was in jeopardy for a while today, uh, or throughout the last couple of weeks of this campaign. We're looking right now at the map as it continues to fill out, and of course, Minnesota there, another blue one up top there, but not enough. 221 electoral votes for uh, John Kerry, the Democratic challenger, 269, one shy of 270 for the president in what looks to be a beautiful map here. Certainly wouldn't want to, excuse me, I think we have another call at this hour right now. There it is. I believe now it looks like the president uh, for the state of Michigan, it looks like, has gone to John F. Kerry, 51% of the vote. NBC News projecting now with more than 2.2 million votes. John Kerry takes Michigan at this hour with 51% of the vote. One more goes up in the blue category for John Kerry. And there it is, 238 electoral votes for John Kerry, 269 for George Bush. Still watching very closely the western states of Nevada and New Mexico. And still way out there on the East Coast, New Hampshire has not come in with an official winner in the state of New Hampshire. As of yet, of course, that's in John Kerry's backyard, his home state of Massachusetts. And that also a very, very close vote total at this time. And Jacques, I was going to uh, ask you in just a moment, uh, we see just 269 electoral votes for the president. Uh, we do want to mention, though, before, as we go through some of these uh, swing states still in play right now, New Hampshire with 95% of the vote in. 
Just a 10,388 vote difference between John Kerry and George Bush at this hour. And in the state of, well, there's the total for electoral votes, 270, as we said, mm -hmm. needed. 269 for President Bush, 238 for John Kerry, still up in the air. Still up in the air. And coming up, the final. Wisconsin, 99% in, but still too close to call in the state of Wisconsin. Only about 14,000 votes separating those two in the state of Wisconsin, 13,293 to be exact. Several states in this category at this hour are now down to just a handful, about five states, I believe, still up in the air in this election, but very important because they're all those key battleground states. And Randy, they say third time's a charm, so I'm gonna... But if it got over 120 to 125 million, at that point it would start advantaging Senator Kerry. And so while turnout was extremely high, very, very high, but the thing is, I think it needed to go a bit higher than that uh, for it to start coming back around to carry. Because four and years ago, uh, Democrats did have a better get out the vote operation. And a lot Charlie, of. Charlie, let me interrupt you for just yeah. a second. Continue that thought. But I want to tell our viewers that we are starting to call some of these states now. NBC News is calling Nevada now for the president to uh, lead there some uh, 21,000 votes in the state of Nevada. NBC News, in fact, calling that state in President Bush's favor. And certainly by winning Nevada, that puts him over, over the 269. So now he's a well above 270 with Nevada's electoral votes as well. So now he is officially uh, NBC News projecting President Bush, the winner. That, that uh, electoral uh, calendar right there, excuse me, that electoral vote uh, is a little bit off there because he's not at 269. NBC News now projecting George W. Bush as the president of the United States. Charlie, are you still there with us yeah. as we uh, let our viewers know that this has in fact occurred? President of the United States, George W. Bush, elected by a majority of the U.S. population by some three and a half million votes on the raw numbers, 51 to 48 percent, I believe, are the last percentage numbers that came in. And there are the new electoral vote numbers as well. President Bush with 274 electoral votes. John Kerry with 238. Of course, there are still some states to come, but it's pointless at this point. And you factor that in with the fact that John Kerry has called the president to concede, offering his congratulations. He also said he will hold a concession speech coming up between 1 and 1.30 this afternoon. President Bush to follow up with his acceptance speech as President of the United States for a second term coming up about 3 o'clock this afternoon. All this happening right here on MSNBC within the last few moments. Randy, That's I don't know right, about Dad. you. I kind of exhaled when I have, whether it was President Bush or Senator Kerry coming on, up out on top, uh, I'm glad it's over. We couldn't go through another 36 days. Yeah, you raise a very good point, Charlie. I think the whole nation, we talked to a lot of people here on Democracy Plaza over the course of the last weeks, and the one thing that, that we heard over and over again is, let it be fun, but let it be over on Election Day or very close to Election Day, and that's exactly what it appears has happened here. And Charlie, there was so much anticipation, or many people just very concerned, obviously, with those 15,000 plus lawyers between the uh, Kerry and Bush campaigns, that something would go wrong. It, 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 are you pleasantly surprised that we didn't have the voting problems we saw last presidential election? Well, I did, because you had a combination of the old technology and the paper ballot so many places, and then you had new technology, and think about any time new technology is ever introduced, there are problems. And then you think of the average age of a poll worker in this country is 72 years old. So let's combine 72-year-old temporary workers using new technology and, you know, the chances, plus the old technology that was badly flawed anyway, uh, yeah, this was a, press, a recipe for a disaster and, you know, thank God we didn't have it again and we're going to have another four years before a presidential election to try to, you know, kind of get this thing settled down and get the systems going. So I'm very relieved, but, you know, Tuesday... Of all this, Republicans might pick up as many as four Senate seats and for the first time in 52 years, a Senate leader has lost his seat. Democratic Senator Tom Daschle of South Dakota has conceded his seat to Republican John Thune in what was a very close race. Here's the outgoing Senator Daschle from just a few minutes ago in Sioux Falls. I have a profound respect for the people of our state.